Hey guys, what's up? It's Muscle903 here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the best OBS settings on recording your screen or whatever you're doing, and how to have like no lag on it at all. So hopefully these steps help you guys out, and before I get started, I just want to say be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, because I'm on my way to 7,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated. But other than that, let's get on with the video. So first things first is open up OBS. Now there's a high chance that your OBS does not look like mine, and that's due to the reason that there are actually two versions of OBS. There's OBS multi-platform, then there's the normal OBS, which is only available on Windows. So I highly recommend getting this Windows version because it's the exact same one as this one. So that's what I'm going to be using in the video. But there, I can make a video if you guys want me to make one on multi-platform. It will not be a problem at all. So once you have this version of OBS, what you want to do is go to the settings button right here. And then make sure your language is on English or whatever language you prefer. And you can really skip over this general tab. There's not much to do over here. Once you finish that tab, you can go to the encoding tab. Now this is where a lot of things uh, are going to be changed. Maybe for you guys, not really for me because my settings are already like set up. But the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the encoder is set on x264 and make sure to uncheck use CBR. Make your quality balance 10 and your max, max bitrate actually depends on your internet speed. I'm going to leave mine around 300, uh, 3500, but I highly recommend doing it around 3000 if you have like an average computer or something like that. If you have a better one, I mean, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't like hinder your performance at all if you upped it to like 5000 or anything like that, but I don't really think it's that necessary. Make sure to uncheck use custom buffer size and keep your bitrate audio at 128. You can copy these settings as well because, um, yeah, if I don't really mention it, then I highly recommend just keeping the same settings I have. So then you can go over to broadcast settings. There's two settings for this because OBS is also a live streaming uh, kind of software and you can also just use it for normal recording. This video is just for uh, file output only, so basically recording your videos. So you just want to change it to file output only. From here, this is where you can pick where you want your files to save to. So I have mine saved to my secondary hard drive and then I have a file folder called recordings and then a folder inside of that called OBS. In this program, there's actually two versions that you can use for an extension. There's .mp4 and .flv. The MP4 is more of a universal type of, uh, I don't know, like file extension, so it can really work in Sony Vegas or literally any like recording or editing software. Uh, .flvs are more rare and uh, I don't really know many programs that actually use it. So I'm just going to like put a 1 right here and then save it and then every time there will be like a new number or something. But actually I'll just remove the 1 and just leave it so it's just going to be like 0, 1, 0, 2 every time I start a new recording. So yeah, I highly recommend keeping it at .mp4 and just make sure you save it to wherever you'll know where your download is. A lot of people do it to their desktop and stuff like that, and uh, yeah. So I feel like I talked a bit too much on this thing, but I think I should have gone over it. Uh, over here, you're able to choose your video adapter. Now, if you have Intel integrated graphics or like family graphics or something like that, that's 100% fine. That just means you're using integrated graphics on your computer. Since I have a GPU in my computer, I'm going to have that selected. And from here, you want to pick your monitor size or your monitor's uh, resolution. Mine is 1920 by 1080. If you're unfamiliar with what yours is, all you have to do is go to whatismyscreenresolution.com and it will tell you right here. So once you do that, just go ahead and type those in and keep the, the aspect ratio is probably going to stay 16 by 9 because those are like the monitor, uh, monitor standards by now. For resolution downscale, this is where you get to pick what you want your video to actually come out as on YouTube. I recently started uploading in 1080p only, so I'm going to move mine to 1080p. If you want to upload it in 720p, then change yours to 1280 by 720 It's not going to really uh, do anything bad to your recording or anything like that, it's just going to change the quality that it comes out as. If your computer can handle 1080p, I highly recommend it. Now that YouTube allows 60fps, you're also able to add 60fps. Uh, before it used to only be 30, but now that we got 60, I highly recommend keeping it on 60 because it will make your uploads way more smoother and it's just going to look way nicer for your audience. So go ahead and apply that and you can go to audio. Over here you can pick what um, actually is happening in your, uh, like I don't know how to say this properly, but basically if you're listening to music, that audio can also come into the recording and stuff like that. So I highly recommend adding that, I just keep mine at default, and then if you want to add your microphone, like my Astro A40 mix amp, I can add it and then I can hit apply, but I'm not going to use that. But I highly recommend if you want to talk over in your like video, like make a commentary or do a live commentary, I highly recommend putting your microphone over here because then it's just way too much work uh, when you're doing it some other time. From here you can leave all these things the same. Go ahead and hit apply and then we can go to hotkeys. Hotkeys are honestly a custom preference. I don't use them because I'm fine with just opening the program or hitting start record and then closing it. 
But if you're like having like an easier way to access things and stuff like that, I highly recommend setting these up. From here we can go to advanced. Keep all the settings the same that I have. Except this one. This one, I highly recommend trying to at least keep yours on faster faster if you have an average computer. And if you have a better computer or above average computer, I'd put mine on very fast, super fast, or ultra fast. I have mine on very fast because, uh, I don't know, I could probably do super fast. I don't know about ultra. That'd probably like uh, hinder my computer's performance for sure. Make sure you use CF CVR is on and uh, your latency tuning factor is at 20 and your key interval is at 2. Uh, I don't really think there's anything in here or any of those things as well. So that really wraps up the video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, please be sure to hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already, because I'm on way to 7,000 subscribers and all help is appreciated. Remember if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to drop them down in the comment section below, and other than that, I will see you guys in my next one. Peace.